everybody it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and today we're going to work on this applique block this is a bird here and I've got a light board here that I am using a light table and it's hooked up to my computer so we're kind of in a little different location in my studio or my sewing room today um, you can use a um, window uh, with sun coming through it or um, any kind of light table that you can come up with. What I used to use was a glass top table and I'd put a lamp underneath it and that made my light box. And you can also just outline this um, figure here, this pattern here with a, a dark sharpie, uh, a black sharpie and sometimes you can just see through that. So just do whatever you need to. But a couple of things I wanted to show you that I have on here is I have some marks and these are to help you place them on the fabric if you want your fabric to go a certain way. So these two marks um, are in the same position and this one is the center of the block. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna write, write that on here. I'll just put block center. So this will be your placement guide here. And you'll also get this sheet here, which is the uh, pieces that you want to cut out. And I've got the dotted line, which is like the edge of the piece that'll be showing. And then from that to the edge will be um, the part that's going to go underneath another part. So you can see we've got three pieces that will tuck underneath others. Um, Oh, well, four because the beak will also. And then these two pieces go on top. This is an eye if you want to make an eye out of fabric. I'm going to use a button. So I don't like dealing with little little circles of fabric like that. So I'm just going to use buttons for, for mine. Now, the way I made mine, I'm going to show here. Um, I made the tail and the body the same fabric but I made it into two pieces because it fits on my fabric better so if you want to make that all one piece instead of having two pieces here you can you just need to take these two pieces here and line them up and then cut them as one piece so that's all up to you so I've gone ahead and cut my pieces out of out of fabric and this block is going to be the same as the one I just finished it's going to be the same as this one now in my quilt I have three different bird blocks I'll have two of this colorway I have two of another colorway and then I have a third that's completely different from the other four and that one will go in the center so that's just the way I chose to do it. You can make them all the same if you want to or every single one of them different. That's that's all up to you. So what I'm gonna do is um, show you what fusible web I'm using. Um, if you've seen any of my applique videos before, you know I use a variety of different um, products. And today I'm using Easy Steam 2. This is a two-sided pressure sensitive fusible web. So you do fuse it, but to make your appliques, you don't need to fuse it to your fabric. You just press it on there. So um, it just follow the directions on whatever fusible you decide to use. So you can use fusible that is non-pressure sensitive. You know, you can use whatever you want to. So this is Easy Steam 2. It's by Pellon. I bought this at Hobby Lobby. You can also get it at Joann's. You can get it online from Amazon. There's lots of different places you can get it. So I have all of my pieces and I'm just going to start with the pieces that are in the back. I'm going to do those first and then build to the front. So things that are in the back is this back wing, the tail, and the beak and then the body will go next this piece here which is the breast piece and the front wing okay so first thing i'm going to do is to line up my fabric so my uh 
light table is got a little bit of static to it so everything stays in place it doesn't slide around um, and I pressed my background fabric in half both directions and I cut it um, half an inch larger than the finished block or the unfinished block unfinished this block is 12 and a half I cut my fabric 13 inches so that's like an inch larger than the finished size of the block and the reason I've got this center here is that this block doesn't fill the whole space you know we've got space at the top and space at the bottom and I want to, to center it so I centered that's why I marked the center mark on the pattern and then made myself a center on my fabric so I just want to make sure that it looks square if it doesn't then I can always adjust things and I think this looks really good so I'm going to let that go and then I'm going to start fusing and I'm going to start applying my appliques and I just take off the backing and just lay it down and then I just do my best to line everything up with the drawn lines and try not to move my fabric. If you have problems with that, you can use your Wonder Clips to just clip this on here and then it won't move on you. So I have that, I have the tailpiece. Now when I cut out my fabrics, I tried to line up my tail fabric with the body fabric, but I didn't get it right. So I've got none of my pieces are um, all are lined up they're not lined up correctly the pattern is different so I have that and I'll go ahead and put the beak on and then I'll put the body so uh, the paper comes off of these real easily and as I have said multiple times I'm not a perfectionist so little little imperfections do not bother me and I think it just makes the projects a little bit more unique. And this is a whimsical block anyway. This isn't a precision pieced product here. Okay, and then the body will go right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and peel the paper off the back. And then line this up. And I'm going to have to get in a little close here so I can see. And it's, this is repositionable. So I can pull it up and set it back down if I need to. Okay. And just press it down with my fingers. Okay, I need the back wing and the breast piece and then we're, we're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on first. So I'll just go ahead and peel off the backing. And then here's the front wing. Okay, this um, Easy Steam 2 is similar to Steam Seam 2. It's the same idea, it's pressure sensitive and it's repositionable. So there you go. And that's all there is to applying the applique. Now, once you've got this down though, you do want to press it with your iron. So um, just follow your instructions and let me pull my instructions out so I can tell you what this says. Okay, to permanently fuse the applique, you set your iron to cotton, setting with steam, cover it with a damp press cloth, and then press down firmly for 10 to 15 seconds in each area. 
of your applique. So that's um, pretty easy. So this piece is ready to be permanently fused down. And then once I get it all fused down, then I'll go ahead and do um, some machine embroidery around it with a blanket stitch and uh, it'll be ready to go into the block. And I'm not going to add the eyes until after I have it quilted. So um, that's that way it's not in the way of the machine while I'm quilting. But that's all there is to that block. So I have that one and this one that I showed you earlier, which is the same. And then this one is my center block. This one is ready to be permanently fused too. So this one was my test go. I got a little, some wrinkles right there that should come out when I press it. But um, this one had some directional fabric in it, so I used those crosshairs to help me line everything up. This one I did get correct as far as those lines being horizontal. They didn't line up to here, but I'm okay with that. Now I'm ready to do the machine applique and I went and bought thread that will match the applique pieces and in the bobbin I just have an all-purpose white thread. So nothing special there. Um, the thread I'm using is um, Guterman and this is their 100% uh, viscous thread. So here is the one that matches the peach colors. I'm just going to, I'm going to start here, I think I'll start here at the, the body and I'm going to go ahead and lower my needle so I know exactly where to place it and I want the right swing to go off of the applique into the background and then the left swing will go in. And what I'm using is a blanket stitch and I have it at 2.5 on the width and 1.8 on the length. So that should take care of things for me. So I'm just taking my time and rotating the fabric as I need to. going to tie off there because now I'm going to go around the tail and then come on up here. So I am going to cut the thread. And I'll grab these tails and get them off too. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to Make sure I have the needle going right off the fabric and then it will zigzag in. So we're doing good here. stop with my needle down so and I'm adjusting the block as I need
and now I'm just going to turn and go all the way around this wing here. can see hopefully you can see close up some of the stitching on that and there is the tail okay so I need to do the back wing and the head and then I change I'll change to the pink thread and do the um, breast of the bird and the beak Okay, so here is the completed block. So I think that looks pretty good. So 
so once I get these all put together and um, get the quilt quilted then I will sew on the buttons for the eye and um, then it'll be done so um, it's going pretty good um, I like these big pieces where there's not a lot of um, little pieces to go around we you know we just got a handful of pieces there's two three four five there's six pieces here and if you choose to make the tail and the body all one piece and you only have five another thing you can remember is that you can make this tail a different fabric from the body you don't have to do it the same so you know just do it your own way and uh, hope you enjoy it thanks for watching for more quilting ideas click on the video links and to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.